Congratulations, we're at the match together and I'm so grateful. Enjoy your practice, have fun seeing what's inside. Um, if you haven't already, please grab a block or perhaps a little roll-up towel or something. I actually would like to start with that support under the rib cage. So you're kind of rolling it up or placing the block so that the upper edge of your object is just down below the wingtips of the shoulder blades. And so you kind of sit down on your mat, place your object, and kind of settle yourself onto your forearms, elbows to recline over it. Now your head should comfortably settle on the floor. So if you're feeling either neck pull at the front or pressure at the back, then your object is too high. You could also tuck something under your head or make your object of support smaller. That's the other option. And so this should feel good. This is an invitation to your spine to soften. And that's gonna be one of our focuses uh, in this practice today is really just freeing and lubricating the spine from some of the muscular holding. So while you're here, begin rotating your head side to side. Right? We know that the upper end of the spine is all the way up into the base of the skull. It doesn't end at the neck. So every time we move our head, we're inviting movement in the spine. Conversely, when we have our head dropped forward, like looking at a project all the time, that's putting torque and pull on the spine. So this wonderful opening that you're offering with the head dropped back a little bit, is such an invitation to unwind that holding pattern. One of my favorite little things to add on is to kind of actively reach the chin up away from the chest and kind of squeeze my skull, the back of my head, back towards my shoulder blades, if you will. And I find that it kind of massages those muscles around the base of the skull and even further down into the upper back. Lovely. Now an invitation to add an arm movement here. So taking your right arm straight up towards the ceiling and then out behind you, like you're trying to reach the wall beyond your head and just start sort of waving a little right and left, keeping an active reach. And this invites, I hope you can feel a massage and kind of liberation around the shoulder blades. And when you feel complete, on that side, releasing the arm. Taking the other arm up to the ceiling and reaching behind through the middle finger and slowly pulsing that arm in and out towards the ear. You might still be moving the head a little bit. Any, any inclination that your body gives you during this practice, take it. And then you can rejoin the framework that I'm providing when you're ready. And at some point, releasing both arms down to the floor, just relax. If you're still comfortable on your object of support, stay. Um, we'll be adding breath here. If it's becoming awkward or tension building, roll a little to one side to come off and join us on your back flat. Inviting you into three sighing breaths. So gathering a long inhale through the nose. Ah, exhaling with a sigh. As we do a few more, just notice what the energy of the release is. Sometimes it's just ah, a light sigh. Other times you might feel just an inclination towards a ah, stronger kind of dump of stagnant energy that your breath is releasing. Awesome. Let's do a few more together. Inhaling, asking, is there more? Can you feel any more of your chest and rib cage with breath? <sighs> Last couple. And notice if the energy is shifting, maybe just your overall energy or alertness level. We can just by coming into our breath, go from feeling kind of numb or draggy to more present. Maybe a soft smile 
just naturally finding its way across our lips. And when you are complete here, again, rolling to the side to come off your object of support so that you're not lifting your head directly up to tightening the neck once more. And once that is gone, return please to your back body and coming into compression and expansion. One of my favorite ways to come into our center body and our breath. Nice long inhale. Notice it moving front body, back body, and up the side ribs. Exhale, belly to spine, and you're anchoring your low back into the floor as if you really wanted to squish something there. But remain soft in the neck. So practice rolling the head side to side again. Let's do that a few more times. Inhaling slow, deep, and wide. Really letting that belly get nice and big, what I call a Buddha belly. Exhaling, emptying belly to spine, low back anchoring. So you might feel how this anchoring, squeezing down gets rid of your low back curve. And I want you to feel how when that's happening, there's the capacity to really engage the front abdominal muscles, to wake them up. If you need help, you might poke your hands into those muscles and say, hey you, good morning, hello. And one last time, really observing the breath, asking is there more, seeing if you can find that gap or pause at the very end of the inhale. And release. Just remain soft here for a moment. Coming into breath awareness. Now that we're not doing anything particular with the breath, just try to notice its qualities. Is it shallow or is it deep? Where do you feel it in the body? And I'm going to invite you to add your three points of introversion. It will really help us in our awareness. So guide your vision up and in, third eye point, crossing the eyes like you wanna see back inside of your own forehead. Lightly connect the tip of the tongue at the roof of the mouth, softening the rest of the tongue. And then adding your ujjayi throat contraction. So you contract the throat a little bit like you're about to clear it or fog a mirror, and the mouth stays closed. And you should be able to hear kind of a whooshing sound, like wind in the trees or ocean waves. All right, let's just observe, please, a couple more rounds. Noticing the subtlety of the ends of inhale and exhale, where it's just more of a whisper. Asking, is there more? Last one. Beautiful. And bringing the right knee into the belly for release wind pose. So clasping the hands around the right knee, both feet are flat, really reaching away from you through your left heel. Shoulder heads anchor. And as you hold the knee here, you can wiggle a little right and left or again, any little organic add-ons that appeal. But I'm most interested in what the breath does as we breathe into that Buddha belly. Hopefully it presses the belly towards the thigh and then we can exhaling, uh, bring the thigh towards the belly, providing a nice little massage for that lower abdomen ascending colon area. Last one here. If you'd like, add a little sit up. Just like you want to kiss your knee. Nice. And now take your left foot and plant it on the floor like you do for bridge. Cross that right ankle onto the left knee. So we're going directly into our reclined pigeon. 
on this side, bringing the right knee into the belly again. But of course, now I've got my shin kind of perpendicular to the body. And I've got options. The first way to deepen my hip stretch that I'm looking for is to just rotate a little left with that lower body. Additionally, I might grab my right foot with my left hand and anchor it towards my body a little bit more. And sometimes releasing that most intense edge and deepening again is a really good way to help your body release stored tension. If we just go powerfully right to the most intense place, sometimes the body just goes into protection. And when you feel complete on this side, never rush to meet my words. Come back to center, plant your left foot again, keep that right knee crossed the way you've got it or the right ankle crossed. We're gonna bring our arms out into a T position and invite you to slowly lower your lower body to the left. So it's a little spinal twist. If this feels like too much of a pull into your low back, please release that top leg and just come into a more classic embryo position. Here again, inviting you to play with your head. You might rotate to look behind you. You also could be sweeping that right arm up by the ear, down back towards the hip. Inviting, again, opening, loosening in the spine. And when you feel complete here, you'll come back to center. If your back is sensitive, again, just really gently, one knee at a time with any support you need to provide. I'm going to extend my right leg now for release wind pose. Left knee in, shoulder head to anchor. And take a moment to observe if this side is different at all. Sometimes when we're tight on one kind of side of our spinal column, one side of our body, this position might pull us a little out to the side, for example, so out to the left. Maybe that happened to you when your knee was in on the right side. Maybe you're pretty symmetrical. Notice that too. Deep breath into the belly. And exhaling, drawing the thigh closer to the abdomen. Let's do that a couple more times. This is our descending colon, and this side is helping continue move that digestive process circularly through the system. One last time, really breathing deeply to get the belly to meet the thigh. And we'll take our right leg and plant it, right foot planted like we do in bridge. Cross the left ankle onto the right thigh and bring the whole deal towards the chest, hugging around the left knee. Now, if that's just too much, you can leave that right foot planted and kind of hug the left knee from there. So there's always a way to make this useful, attainable, and comfortable enough. We're seeking intensity, but we're never seeking a place where our body goes into protection or it comes into pain from it. So again, to deepen this stretch for that left glute hip area, you'll roll just a little to the right. You might also clasp the left foot with your right hand and oh, deeply hug it. Breathing while you're here, lets the body know that you are well, you are whole. Is this side different? Slowly return center, plant that right foot again, arms out into a T, always anchoring the shoulder heads down the back, and then slowly rotating to lower the right leg and so on, on down to the mat. Again, if this just feels like too much, uncross that leg and come into your embryo pose. So one of the things that you might notice is that back arm <laughs> may not be on the floor. It doesn't need to be for us to get the benefit of spinal twist. And in fact, we'd rather have our legs anchored and using that back arm and so on to encourage the twist. So on your inhale, give it plenty of room. It may bring you a little out of your twist. And on your exhale, 
I hope you'll find a greater opening. In your own time, come slowly on back and we'll plant our feet for bridge pose. Powering down through the upper arm to start and sending those hips on up. Good. Check in and see if those inner thighs are working. If not, imagine a block or something between them to squeeze. And your option to just kind of pulse the hips up to their deepest stretch, back down a little bit, or maybe coming all the way back to your mat and up again. What's needed today? What does your body have to say? You know, animals are so good at listening, right? And they just wiggle and move to let the tension move through their bodies. But we get pretty stuck in our head and especially thinking, oh, how our practice should be. One more, holding now at the upper end, please add your leg extension, slowly extending one leg at a time. You're keeping your thighs the same height. If you feel any pain in your back, then please go instead to just a hovering of one foot off the floor at a time. And this will really wake up all of the supporting muscle groups that hold you together and help them work evenly. Noticing if you do have a little bit of a drop through one hip, does it evolve as you go back and forth a few times? And releasing slowly on down. And option here to just bring the feet together and let the knees come out passively into a butterfly on the floor. Or gathering the feet into your hands and bringing them towards the butt in a more active butterfly. Some of you may enjoy adding a little sit-up motion there and doing that little pulse of bringing one foot towards the head and then the other. Wherever you are, being in breath. Deep belly breath. Marvelous. Then please plant your feet on the floor wide, just like a horse stance as I think of it. And we're gonna slowly take one knee towards the center line of the mat and slowly the other. This is nice, it really gets into the relationship that's in the inner thigh, outer leg, <laughs> you probably can feel that. And maybe more on one side. Breathing. The next time the right leg is down, invitation to reach through that right arm. You might even activate your right knee down a little bit. Oh yeah. Come back to center, left knee down. Left arm reaches up beyond the head. Breathe deeply into that. And slowly return, knees to belly. All right, we're gonna spinal rock or however you'd like to get there um, into cross-legged uh, to come forward actually into our forearm plank. So some of you might get there some other way, right? I like to do it this way and then I kind of have fun coming to my forearms and stepping back one leg at a time into my forearm plank. If you're on your abdomen, similarly, you will get there by curling your toes under. And everybody, make sure that you feel that you've got a little bit of a tailbone tuck. Again, really igniting those front abdominal muscles. If you're swagging, this is gonna feel really hard and not much fun or benefit. We're gonna practice a moment here being present with intensity. If you don't have any quivering going on at all, please walk your elbows forward a little bit. If this is just too much, then I hope you've already dropped to your knees where you can get an amazing amount of effort in your core body. Just make sure that the tailbone is tucked. And can you breathe with intention into all this? Inhaling, exhaling. And in your own time, releasing. Giving yourself to gravity, letting your body settle on the mat. You may want to rock the hips a little side to side. That can feel really good. I'm going to invite us in our pre-bow bow stretch. 
Uh, the wonderful alternate to that is doing standing quadriceps where quadriceps stretch where you're doing one at a time. For those of us on the belly, I want you to place your right forearm and engage the glutes down so that as you clasp your left ankle at first, you're already really supported in the low back. The butt cheeks have got to be engaged. And then you can reach back for that other ankle and resettle your head, keeping glutes engaged. Now, if that doesn't work, you just can't reach that ankle or it's awkward in your low back, please come into a standing version instead. Still engage your glutes while you're reaching for that first ankle to protect that low back. First two. And you'll just be doing one at a time. This is one side at a time. I think she's outside. And breathing into that, noticing what's happening in the body. Breathing. Those of you on your belly, you might want to try a little bow pose. So pressing the ankles back into the hands. Those of us standing, hopefully you've done both sides by now. And we might all go into a nice low back release. If you're standing, just drape yourself in ragdoll. If you're on your belly, pressing back to child's pose. Please fill your belly with breath, but also bring it into the low back. When we direct breath like that, we're literally taking a massage to that area, bringing healing energy to that area. And then we're gonna all come to a standing pose. So however you wanna get there, if you're on your belly and you wanna, or in child and you wanna walk those hands back to the feet or whatever, but we're gonna do a little um, self massage. It's actually more of a little bit of a pounding, <clears throat> but you're gonna come to standing and I want you to shift all of your weight onto your left foot. And you're gonna take that right fist and just sort of pound up and down the side of the leg where our IT bands can be really, really tight. And then you can get into also the front of the leg quadricep. And while you're doing this, please join me in breath, being in your core. And then lastly, you're gonna take your right hand and I'm gonna bring my fingers kind of around, hopefully you can feel kind of that groove um, where the IT band is. So I've got my thumb on the front of the thigh and my fingers wrapping around kind of behind and I'm gonna kind of pluck those like they're a big guitar string, kind of pulling them forward towards the front of my leg. Yeah, you can feel that. And you might find that it's much more intense lower down or higher up depending, and it might be quite different on the other side. Let's find out. We're gonna shift all of our weight onto our right leg, and I'm gonna start that pounding process. I wish I had a better word for it that sounded um, kinder, <laughs> but it is a, a loving act, a loving rhythm, taking your fist and just finding out what's in that left leg. Make sure you find your way around to the front, those quadriceps. Breathing slow, deep and wide. Oh, I can feel a nice buzzing going on in my, my tissue there. And then I'm gonna find that kind of strumming position. So taking my hand so that my thumb is on the front of the thigh. We're working on the left this time again. Um, we've got the fingers down behind and I'm trying to pluck those IT bands and just give them some room. Well, they get kind of stuck. You know, they carry us around. If you've been doing any hiking, um, you know, you might have really been working these hard, especially if you're hiking in snow. Nice. And you can just give them both kind of a rub, move anything through. And we're gonna come sideways on our mat. And this is actually one of the best ways to also release the, the upper leg and hip area is taking the, those feet wide outside of that little forward path of motion that we spend so much time in. So getting the feet parallel and first going side to side, just slowly so off. you can feel what's going on in your knees, but also what's happening in your footbed. We don't want to lose contact with any part of the foot. We want to feel like a sticky tree frog. And I'm pushing from that foot and pushing from the other. 
Good. And when you are ready, start going deeper. Now you might never get your hands to the floor. That's fine. You could also be doing this holding on to a chair or an ottoman, a kitchen counter. So it's a great thing to do while you're waiting for your coffee to brew. And if you can get down to the floor, it's nice to be able to let your head hang. Really take advantage of gravity here. If you're quite deep in the pose and you're ready for a little more, you might be able to drop kind of your butt towards say your left heel and let your uh, right foot flex up towards the sky. Never really know quite how to explain this, but you can take a, a peek at what I'm doing if that helps. This isn't gonna work for everybody, but sometimes it just feels perfect. Breathing, going side to side, however you're doing it. And then inviting you to pause center, come up so that you are going to be able to lay your right forearm or elbow on your right thigh. Inhale, rotating open through the left arm. Exhaling, left arm plants, left thigh. Inhaling, rotating open to the right with that right arm and chest. Maybe looking at the ceiling. Exhaling, returning. We're gonna keep doing this a few times back and forth and you can add a little extra kind of push and pressure with that planted elbow that helps you just get a little more open. Ujjayi breath. Deep working of the core as it takes us through our yoga practice. One more time, each side. And then invitation to come up and add a little yoga mudra engagement. That's that intertwining of the hands behind the back. Or if that's not useful, using a strap or a scarf or something to allow those hands to come a little further apart. And you might choose to just do this standing. It's wonderful work, especially if you kind of pulse. So press the hands away from the hips and release. Really let those shoulder heads be drawn back and release. Alternatively, you might go into a fold here in your straddle. Always giving the breath room. And when you feel complete, join me upright. And we're going to take it into an opposite stretch, what we call kind of standing thread the needle. So you're going to cross that right arm to the left. Keep it straight as you connect with your elbow. So you want to take your left hand at the elbow, not higher, to press that arm towards you. And there's no expectation that it's coming to my body or touching. I just want to get that nice stretch out there in the shoulder. Would it feel good to rotate a little left? So I'm sort of just lowering everything a little to the left, a little side stretch. Deep breath. And then throw it away. Let that right arm release up and back. Nice. Yes, let's take that left arm across, pressing at the elbow, not higher. And letting breath influence this. So on that deep inhalation, it should make the arm kind of come out a little from the body. And on the exhalation, there's room to deepen the stretch. Another little subtle activation. If you activate your left hand and arm a little away from you, as you're drawing it towards you. So I'm using that left hand to push back. You might get an extra little something. And slowly rotating down to the right. Always taking the head wherever it's in ease. And release and throw it up and away behind you. Staying as you are, um, creating a nice athletic stance as I think of it. We're not trying to create the widest stance ever, but I don't want my feet right beneath me either. I want to feel powerful, engaged, rooted, and strong. 
And we're going to do some nice energy movement using core and arms and breath. It's really important as we're doing this that we're able to engage those core muscles. So check your body. If you feel that you're a little bit sort of tilted tailbone back, arched in the back, go the other way like you would a little bit in cat back, okay? We're going to inhale and bring the hands in back towards us like we're about to push something away, which we are. And on the exhale, draw your body back as you push your hands forward. Again, you might straighten the legs a little on the inhale, exhale, go into your deep pushing squat here. Now I challenge you as you continue this to get very powerful in center body and in all those arm muscles, but still stay soft in your neck, your tongue, your eyes, maybe even smiling a little bit. One more. Marvelous. Pause. We're going to do another movement, different direction. So again, make any adjustments or give those ankles a break, etc. cetera. Again, nice, powerful stance. And we're going to bring the hands in at our sides, like I'm about to push two walls away. All right, so I'm inhaling, my hands come towards me. Exhaling, I'm going to deepen my squat for power to push two walls away. If your balance is good enough here that you can close your eyes, you might do that to really feel that you're uh, coursing that strength through your entire body. And maybe there's something energetically that you even want to name that you'd like to push away and create space. Last one. Marvelous. And release. Nice. Shake it out. Swing it out. You might circle it out. One arm, the other. Oh, yeah. And how about our neck? Again, we try not to take on tension there, but it's easy to do it accidentally. Um, so go ahead and clasp your hands around in a little collar. We're not gripping, we're just laying them there for support. And then begin to rotate your head slowly back onto your pinkies, kind of making a horseshoe shape with your movement. Yeah, and this is such an opportunity to notice what's happening in that place where the, the spine really goes up into the skull, occipital ridge area. I've got a muscles, as I call them. And we're gonna then add a little line stretch as we release. So uh, once again, going into a little bit of an athletic squat and our lion stretch, we're mostly just inhaling and then exhaling with a ah, through the mouth, opening the jaw really wide. But we can add arms, inhaling, sweeping up, 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 pushing the earth away, exhaling, ah, deepening into a little squat and making our claws. Let's do three more. You might even stick your tongue out. And if that makes you want to giggle, awesome. If it makes you feel a little lighter, beautiful. I hope you can also feel that squeeze between your shoulder blades. One more. And release. Bring the feet. Beneath you, mountain stance, prayer hands at the heart. And just pause to observe what you've created. One of the most important qualities of our yoga practice is swadhyaya, self-observation. And what's fun is that we just get better and better at it once we choose to become noticers. And it changes everything else. So we begin to take that practice off the mat as well. Tuning in. What do you feel? What did we create so far in our practice?
what were your thoughts about getting to the yoga mat today? And if it was hard, if you had to just tell yourself, no, I'm doing it, notice that and notice how hopefully you feel better now. You're really glad you're here. Thank your own good heart and wise self. Mm -hmm. We're going to come into some warrior flow. Those of you who really crave dog series and being in downward dog and so on, you could go back to downward dog and said right leg flying as an option. We're going to start at the front of the mat, standing crane, left knee lifting. Whatever position you're in, pause for a moment and notice the muscles that are holding you, supporting you, and bring breath to it. One more long inhale, and on your exhalation, slow journey to crescent lunge or high lunge. Kind of steer those hip bones forward. Now, if you're feeling a lot of tension in the front of the legs, it might feel really good to do a little dip and return, getting a nice stretch into that quad. And then everyone, try out your jet airplane arms squeezing upper arms in towards the body. Bringing breath. Let's do one more long inhale. If you want to open up the heart to the sky, certainly do. And exhaling, we're gonna open up warrior two, back up plants 90 degrees and reaching arms out from the heart. We're going to add in a little movement here, a little flow. So we're going to inhale, straighten our front leg and reach up, exalted warrior. And then exhaling, flow forward, elbow to thigh, reaching that left arm out beyond the head. Inhale, straighten that front leg and sweep up with the right arm. So just going back and forth a few times. Exhaling forward, elbow to thigh and extending through that left arm. Inhaling up, and you can always make this a slower process, adding more breaths if you need to in between. Last time, inhaling up and exhaling, planting the hands to downward facing dog. If you skip uh, downward dog and anything on your hands, just go to standing hip pump instead. Otherwise, plant the hands and step back. Remember to bend your knees for your first downward facing dog. You might never straighten them, but for sure in this first one and really liberate that upper body so that there's a beautiful long line from your anchoring of your hands to the hips, reaching up and back. Three sighing breaths. And then we'll rejoin at the front of the mat, unless you're doing downward dog, left leg fly. Otherwise, finding your rag doll, sweeping up to mountain, hands in prayer. And we'll create standing crane, right knee lifts. Pause in your pose. Few breaths observing the muscles that are holding you, supporting you. If you're like me, you probably feel some proprioception wiggling happening in that left foot. See if you can anchor more firmly through the inner foot, the ball of the big toe. Exhaling, step back, crescent lunge or high lunge. And you might want to add that little knee dip again on this side, explore the front of the thigh. You also can stay in that jet airplane arm that I offered on the other side, or join me in a sweeping up and back. So it's like making a snow angel standing up, <laughs> squeezing those upper arms in towards the ribs when you come down. Try to have the arms be more towards behind you than in front of you. You're gonna get more good work of the shoulder heads wrapping down, working that upper back, not the neck. 
One more. Long inhale. Exhale, transition, Virabhadrasana to warrior two. So when you're in warrior two, we would love to feel that we are pushing and stretching the mat with our powerful legs. We also want to feel deeply anchored up and in. So see if you can kind of squeeze your inner thighs a little bit, uh, maybe engage that pelvic floor as well. Make any adjustments you need to to your base so that you feel strong and supported as we come into our little flow here. Inhale, straighten the front leg, reaching up. Exhaling, flowing forward, elbow to thigh, and extending long through that right side. Inhaling, sweeping up. You could also, of course, just keep that left leg bent if you would prefer it. Exhaling forward. I'm going to do this again one more time. Inhaling up and exhaling forward. Good. And we're going to plant the hands to step back to downward facing dog. That might be a lot of movements to take you there, however you need to do it. Or again, standing hip pump is a great alternative. Finding your downward facing dog. See if you can work the heels towards the floor. We actually don't care if they ever get there, but we are saying hello to the backs of the legs. Good, one more sighing breath. And then invitation to go into child's pose resting. Of course, if you're craving flow at this point, you could certainly move through dog series. Otherwise asking you to just get kind of quiet, present simply with your breath, no movements, nothing to keep track of. And when you are ready to join me, we're gonna practice gate pose. And I love this pose for so many reasons. It does require us to be on our hands. And so if this is creating any discomfort in your wrists, you can do fists. It, however, makes the balance portion really hard. I've also had people sometimes do it on their forearms. Um, or you could do it standing and play with it, basically standing half moon instead, um, where you're not on your hand. Otherwise, you're in table pose. And I want you to practice a moment, please, just creating that same little bit of pelvic tuck, uh, kind of hat back until you can feel these front abdominal muscles right there for you. We want them in place as we now take that right foot back 90 degrees, planting the entire sole of the foot. Now look under your body and see if your thigh bone is at an angle. If so, you need to squeeze your left butt cheek towards the right edge of the mat until your thigh bone is straight up and down. And what you can feel when you do that is that there's not only a deep engagement in the glute that you use, but now also in the inner thighs. So my little triangle base here of gate pose has become very strong and stable. And in fact, you might even be able to lift that hand off the floor, certainly can reduce the pressure in it. And when you feel that you've got that in place, lifting your left rib cage towards right, then add your arm. Right arm sweeping to the sky, and some people enjoy reaching it out beyond the head for that side body stretch again. If you're wobbling, great, it's a balancing pose. Always take your head and neck where they need to be. I'm gonna offer also a lift of the leg, so you might bring your uh, right arm, either hand to waist or up to the sky. And then see if you can lift your back leg off the floor. Again, if you're wobbling, maybe falling out of the pose, great. <laughs> Come back in. Plant that foot. One last thing now. See if you can lift your knee, left knee off the floor. If you did, option to extend it straight in front of you. Again, this is a lot of weight on wrists. Not everyone's going to want to do this today. And come on back. Good. Might want to rotate that wrist. Give it some love. Good. And a little cow cat. Gate pose is so interesting because it works so powerfully into our side body, which is a massive part of our core stability, but we don't 
really tap into it very often. We're usually kind of tight and weak that way. When you're ready to return to gate on the other side, again, find that nicely present core. And now take your left foot back 90 degrees, planting firmly. So it's almost like I'm going to test it and push into my mat. Then I'm going to check that right thigh bone, squeezing the right butt cheek towards that left edge of the mat until I've got that beautiful triangle shape. And then as you are ready, check your spine. Many of us will have our head forward unless we check and get it straight. I think there's an instinctive fear of like falling backwards. So we lean our head forward and our butt goes back, but that makes us weak. We need instead to be able to find that long line from that back foot. Okay. And then see if you really engage your right rib cage up towards your left, like you're trying to make a beautiful tunnel for a train or something underneath your ribs. That should give you the stability to at least either reduce the weight in your right hand or maybe even bring it off the mat entirely. And then we can replace it, make sure the shoulder head's anchored and play with releasing that back leg. Having the heel flexed will help because it's gonna create more stability and that line of energy. And when you're ready, replace it and let's see what it takes to lift the right knee off the floor and maybe extend that leg out in front of you to your left side. And release. All right. Pause, love up those wrists. So whether you need to be kneeling or standing, whatever works for you. I know a lot of us are spending a lot of time at computers or even doing other um, kinds of crafts and projects with our hands. So a wonderful release is prayer hands, but then actually reversing those prayer hands so that the fingers rotate down towards the floor. Notice if you shrug, anchor the shoulders back down. And then my favorite add-on from here is to keep the fingers touching, but to start peeling the palm away right at the wrist and seeing if I can get a deep stretch basically through those fingers. And release. Nice, go ahead and wiggle it out. We're going to do a standing balancing pose um, because again, I feel like balancing is such a wonderful way to come present in our body. And I want to offer a tree today, but if there's something else that you're really craving, maybe you've been trying to uh, work with standing half moon or jet airplane or something, feel free to do that. One of the things that I value about tree pose is that it helps us enliven the inner thigh connection, which is a huge part of our core stability. And then we were trying to enliven it in gait pose, but that's a hard place to feel it because your legs aren't even touching. So here, bring your feet all the way together and then squeeze your thighs together like as tightly as you can. And just notice if you feel like there's some muscles there that you don't maybe frequently feel igniting, relax, try it again. Another way that this can be done, um, by the way, is not in tree pose, but I mean as a way to um, work those muscles and really kind of do PT on them, is to squeeze the block between the thighs. Um, and that's something that you can do even once a day and probably by the end of the week, you will have so much more ignition there. This is important for a couple of reasons, and I'm going to talk through this a little bit. Um, feel free to just listen to me and kind of check in with these parts of the body. But I'd like you to notice when you squeeze your inner thighs, can you create more power down through the inner line of the foot? You might even feel that you can lift your other eight toes other than the big toe. We're not trying to lift the outer edge of the foot at all. We're just checking that we're not leaning to the outer foot and gripping with those outer toes. It's inner foot and big toe. So for fun, just lift one foot off the floor, just a little bit. We're not even coming into tree yet. And notice what happens in the standing leg. And switch. Most of us, when we start to lose balance, 
it's the inner foot giving way and we lose balance to the outer foot. And we become unstable and unsafe even if we're walking on ice because this part, this inner thigh part and glute part isn't working. One other thing I'd like you to feel with me for a moment. Bring your feet so they're more neutral mountain, not gripping together or not placed together. Put one hand on your belly and one on your low back, please. Kind of right around that sacral triangle. And I'd like you to gather a long breath in. Just kind of notice the position of your spine, what's happening in these front abdominal muscles and so on. On your exhale, I'd like you to squeeze an imaginary block between the thighs or you can place one there if you've got it handy. And reach up towards the heavens through the spine. So it's a root and reach. You're pushing the earth away, rising up through the heavens and squeezing that block. Now relax. Big breath in. Exhale, root and reach and squeeze. And relax. Doing that one more time. You can even have both hands on the front of the body if that's more comfortable for wrists. What I'm hoping you'll notice, number one, is that when we do that squeeze of the thighs, that the pelvis will tend to tuck under and become more neutral. It actually comes right under our shoulders the way it's designed, but that these front abdominal muscles too can really wake up. And this all puts us in the alignment that we need to stay really stable in the lower body. So let's take that into our tree pose. You might have hands on uh, hips or in prayer, whatever feels right today. And I'm gonna have you first again, find that tree trunk, that squeeze and that root down. Check that your neck feels liberated. It's soft in the tongue, just the tip of it connecting behind the front teeth. Finding breath, moving through this powerful but spacious body of yours. Become aware again of the inner line of the feet connecting and you're gonna release the right foot into kickstand. So I'm coming onto the ball of my right foot with the right ankle kind of tucking into the left ankle bone. Ideally, I'm working towards a 90 degree opening with that right leg. It doesn't matter if we ever get there, but we are kind of externally rotating the thighs away from one another. I don't want it forward. And option to stay there and notice the effort and the challenge that exists, or to take it one step deeper by sliding the foot up onto the calf where the heel would settle below the knee, not on the inside of the knee. Check that your toes are still flared, what we call yoga toes. If they're gripping in towards your standing leg, you'll actually find that you're weaker, your balance is less good. Good, now notice if you've cocked your left hip out to the side and instead squeeze it in, that's gonna use that left inner thigh again. Good. Rooting and reaching, adding perhaps your tree branches. You could be working at any height with those arms. You could go into a deep steeple pose, of course, but please notice if that bothers the neck and adjust. Breathing deeply, even if you feel like you might be falling over. The goal here is not to hold tree pose or perfection. The goal is to work all this intelligence that's inside of us and to notice, observe, are you losing that downward anchoring? Whew, probably ready for a break on that leg, huh? Come out, you might roll the ankles. Sometimes after all of that foot flexion, the yoga toes, it feels really good to kind of curl onto the top of the foot and press the shin bone forward, giving those muscles a little break. All right, other side. And it's interesting, some people really feel that they're so much better um, on one side or another with balance and people tend to think it's their foot that is creating the balance or it's in their head. And so much of it is actually the ability to anchor through the foot, but that it comes from up here in the belly and thighs that we've been talking to. So find again your tree trunk, squeezing, squeezing, rooting, rooting, soft in the neck. Take the left foot into kickstand and perhaps sliding it up onto the calf, yoga toes still flaring. 
Notice if that right hip cocked, squeeze back towards the center. What muscles have to work for you to do that? If you're not sure, intentionally cock that right hip out and then take it back home. Your option to add tree limbs. And if balance is actually pretty easy for you and you'd like to challenge it more, you might just close your eyes. Another fun challenge is taking your vision down and up again. Again, please don't add on for the sake of it and let it distract you from this very deep intelligence that we're trying to cultivate that I hope will change the way we move today off of the yoga mat. Watching a few more breaths, rising and falling, whatever position you're in. If you come back to mountain, great. Breathing. Breathing inside of intensity and instability. Breathing inside of the unknown. And slowly releasing. You might want to kick that leg out, rotate ankles. Again, you may want to stretch the front of both legs and feet by curling foot under. Yeah. I have a, a fun little, well, I think it's fun <laughs> option today for essentially it's a standing pigeon pose, but um, not everyone's going to enjoy it standing. So I'm actually going to start it off seated. And if you've got something nearby that you can just kind of uh, perch on, that would be great. It's, it's kind of fun to try it both ways. So if you have something available that will allow you to be seated like you would in a chair, I want to have my knees straight forward of my hips and my feet straight down. If it's a little different than that angle, don't worry about it. But this is a really great one too for those of you who do spend a lot of time sitting and feeling like, oh, I just need a release. So cross your left ankle onto right thigh. Important that the foot is flexed because this stabilizes and protects the knee. And then inviting you to, I don't want you to fold. I don't want you to curve down over it. I want you to hinge forward. It's as if you're trying to press your lower belly towards your upper thigh and your heart towards the room in front of you. And what many of us find is you don't actually have to go very far to feel a little something in that left hip. Obviously, if you've got anything that's pain, back off, adjust your angle, um, and you know, you could always do a reclined pigeon instead. But this is kind of a nice one to remember is here to just give yourself a break when you've been sitting a whole lot. And you can pulse and press. It can also be a fun place to add a little twist. So if you slide your left hand towards your left foot, kind of, and then rotating open through the right arm, or if you have a chair back behind you, you can hold onto that, or even place your hand, say, on an ottoman or something behind and add that twist. All right, let's release that side and cross the right ankle onto left thigh. Now I can feel a difference just here in neutral without adding the fold. So just it's a great inventory time for you with your body. Again, swadhyaya, self-observation. Breathing as you're ready, pressing your lower abdomen towards the thighs. Yeah, is this side different? And again, option to add a little twist, sliding the right hand towards the left foot. And then I might reach towards the sky or the wall behind me. It's so beautiful. I might plant that hand on the surface behind me. Using the breath to create the massage and coming on out. Yeah. Great uh, kind of answer to that is to stand up and do our standing hip pump, right? So squeeze those glutes forward. Those of you who would like to try this standing um, might be great, especially if this is your first time ever exploring it, to have a chair or a stair railing or a counter or something to just sort of give yourself a little support. You're gonna bend into a chair pose, 
please make sure that that core body is there for you, that your tailbone isn't tilted back, but a little bit under. You should feel that core is locked in. And I'm gonna lift the right knee, cross the right ankle onto left thigh. And this alone can be quite an adventure. If the stability is there enough, inviting you to begin your fold. Again, it begins with the lower belly. Some of you might feel that you have the space to fold and now drape yourself. And you could do that letting now the head drop, the vision coming to your uh, foot on the floor. Some people might be low enough that their hands can be on the floor. And so that can provide some extra stability. And when you are complete, come up. So if you have any knee instability, old injury, et cetera, for obvious reasons, it would be better to be doing this seated. You don't want any real surprises or at the very least with something of support. All right, bend in, lift that left knee, cross left ankle onto right thigh. Foot is flexed, remember, for knee support and stability. And breathing and folding. Again, you might be coming in and out. This might feel pretty chaotic. Um, if it's fun, great. Just enjoy that. Get out of any perfectionism or goal. And if any part of you is tightening up or hurts, please go to the stable version of seated. Using breath and core. Notice if you're losing balance, it's usually that inner line of the foot. Power it down. And slowly on standing hip pump. Inhale that thought behind, exhale, squeeze it forward. You might do this a few times here. If instead you're craving a standing quad stretch, pre bow bow on your belly, these are all options. And those of us who are still standing, I'm just gonna encourage a nice little circling. And if you slide your hands down to the upper thigh kind of on the outside there, that's that IT band area where it connects into the hips and just sort of talk to that area. Tell them they don't have to hold on too tight today. If there's anything that you're craving in your body, I hope you'll go there. Uh, you might go through some flow dog series and maybe there's a particular uh, stretch your body's craving. Maybe there's a particular pose that you have been hungry to work on. And now that you're all warmed up and activated, it's a great time to play with crow pose or anything else. We're going to come into a lovely bit of self massage for closing with our block as support. If you don't have a block, um, you could use a, you know, a thick book or even fold up a, a blanket. Um, in fact, if the, blank, if the block feels too hard, having a little soft blanket or something folded over it can be helpful. We're going to be placing it right under that sacral triangle there at the top of the crack of the butt. So come on down to your back, plant the feet. You're going to lift the hips and slide the block underneath. And I'm going to just settle my hips back on to the block here and notice how does that feel. If you feel anything kind of pinching or pain, um, you either need to adjust the block or come on completely. You might notice that the block is not underneath the low vertebrae at all. It's right at that bony triangle at the top of the butt. So that when I straighten my legs, which you don't have to do if your back again doesn't appreciate it this morning, but when I straighten my legs, that I just feel that the block is kind of supporting me right at my center and I can kind of drape over it. It should feel good. It's an opportunity for a stretch through the front here and the psoas, those digestive organs as well. And often it's a lovely release for the low back. The more you deepen the breath here, the more you'll get the benefit of those stretches. If you're feeling something too much, again, you might just plant the feet so that the legs are bent again. Take your time here. Finding the gap or pause between each breath.
You stay here only as long as it feels really, really good. When you do come off, again, always plant the feet before rising up through the hips, remove your object of support, and then you might lay back down again, bringing knees to belly, just a nice rocking side to side. And using your body as inspiration, what do you notice? Would happy baby feel good? Do you wanna play with some movements into half straddle? So whatever your body is asking for, complying. We're not used to doing that. We spend a lot of time in life off the mat telling our body what to do. So this is a really poignant time where we are willing, we're humble to let the body be the expert and to tell us what's needed. Invitation to find your resting shape. It might be on your back body and corpse, it might be coming into a seated meditation, child's pose, you name it. Notice if you are sitting, if your knees are higher than your hips, it would be lovely to grab a cushion, bolster, something that allows you to be more upright and spine. We're going to be here in simply breath awareness, which is uh, the ultimate meditation. Almost done. Although it isn't so simple to keep our attention on breath. And that's why a lot of people think they're horrible meditators. Um, but the truth is, even if your mind wanders, if you notice and you return your attention to breath, you are having a beautiful meditation. So whether you're on your back or seated or child's pose, I ask you to tune into your breath. Follow its sensations through your body. The breath is very soft and slow and passive now, but see if you can find the gap, the pause between inhale and exhale, exhale and inhale. Notice that the mind has wandered. If you find it very difficult to stay present with breath, you might enact kind of a verbal witnessing. I'm inhaling, I'm inhaling, or inhaling, exhaling, exhaling. Notice, if you can, that there is such a slowing of time, spaciousness, when you commit to finding that gap or pause. It's what we call a place of a thousand possibilities. This is also a beautiful time to set any intention or focus on any energy that you'd like to gather because there's all that spaciousness. Perhaps there's a particular word that is powerful to you, or perhaps you just visualize a particular energy that you're wanting to bring in. Maybe it has a color. So over the next few breaths, as you are witnessing inhale gap, exhale gap, please also use that intention, whether it's a word or picturing energy to fill this incredible space that is you, that is your body.
Is there any particular intention you'd like to carry with you as you move into life off of the yoga mat? When you are ready to solidify that and close your practice, you might place one hand on your heart and one on your abdomen. You could have them in prayer. Notice what feels appropriate today. I'll be closing our practice with three ohms. Happy to have you join in if you'd like. Gathering a long inhale. Uh... Shanti, Shanti, Om, peace, peace, Namaste. Namaste.